Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Sport Calgary's Faces of Calgary Sport. I'm Katrina LeMay Dong, President and CEO of Sport Calgary. And uh, just welcome to everybody. I would ask our panelists if you guys don't mind coming onto screen. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, for the last uh, four sessions that we've had as we started this online intro discovery to sport, we've been featuring various sports, but we figured this week, what a great opportunity to talk about various um, different funding programs, because we know that that has been an issue and uh, I believe it will continue to be an issue. I wanna just, uh, again, welcome everybody. I also wanna just say, Let's have patience. I mean, I know we're we're all just uh, you know we so want to get out of this isolation and pandemic, but let's just have pace, patience. We're getting there. We're really close, and so um, together we're going to make this happen. We're going to get back to sport. So uh, let's uh, let's encourage each other with that. So today, um, I, I always like to give a breakdown of who's registered, and so we really have a mixture today of uh, community members individual families and also sporting organizations. So just to give everybody a feel of, of who's on the call. And just so you know, um, you know we're, gonna, we're gonna have a panel discussion. We're gonna have um, maybe a little bit more time for questions from any of the uh, registrants at the end. And if, just, just so you know, if you would rather ask a question to one of our pan panelists um, on, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, we can set you up in a breakout room uh, after this session. So just let us know. And um, Sport Calgary team, Sandra and Becca uh, are here to assist and to help with that. So uh, let me introduce our, our panelists, uh, a great group here to, to speak on different funding and different support available in the city. Uh, first is Kevin Webster, seven-year team with uh, Kids Sport Calgary and the Calgary Flames Sports Bank. He's a sports dad, coach, volunteer, and advocate for creating opportunities for kids in sport. Prior to joining Kids Sport, he spent time in the sport world with Hockey Canada in their marketing and events department at the Vanier Cup, Wilfrid Laurie University in their athletics and recreation department, and with DC United of the MLS as one of their Canadian interns. So Kevin, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Katrina. Look forward to it. All right. Next, we have Jeff Shepard, who has been part of Calgary Flames Sports Bank. Now, if you don't recognize the name, maybe you would recognize it was formerly known as Comrie's Sports Equipment Bank. He's been there since October 2018. Growing up in BC, well, say you smartened up and you came to the better province. <laughs> uh, the youngest of three boys who's fortunate to have had the ability to participate in sport his entire life and all different types of sports. Since moving to Alberta in 1997 to attend Mount Royal College, which is now a university, and follow his passion for hockey, he's been able to work in and out of the sports industry. And he is who he is today, he says, because of his involvement in sport as a player, a coach, an administrator, a parent, and a fan. Truly appreciates the benefits of sport. It's so relatable to life, isn't that so true? It's lessons, wins and learnings, work ethic, commitment, teamwork, friendships, and overall wellness. So thank you, Jeff. And uh, we look forward to hearing about what's going on uh, in the sports equipment world. Perfect. Thanks, Katrina. And uh, finally, we have Brad Ellard, who joined Jumpstart as Regional Manager, Alberta and Northwest Territories in 2018, after eight years with the Oilers Entertainment Group. Again, smartened up and, and came, uh, <laughs> came to the right place. A graduate of Mount Royal University and alumni of the men's varsity hockey team, his career began executing various sporting events in the Calgary area. He has always had a strong passion for giving back to the community and believes that being physically active when you are a child is crucial to developing many life skills. So uh, thanks, Brad. And uh, yeah, I look forward to talking about... Um, various granting opportunities that we've been promoting lately. Yeah, sounds great, Katrina, happy to be here. So I guess, first of all, you know, probably most people have heard of the organizations, but I'm gonna give you each um, some time because if you could actually describe and, and explain what your organization does, um, you know, we were even saying before we started, uh, you know, Brad was joking as, you know, if you go to, um, sport check or Canadian tire and they said do you want to donate to jumpstart but everybody has heard that but could actually somebody define what the program is so you know Brad why don't I start with you and uh, then I'll go to Jeff and then to Kevin 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, it, it's a true point, Katrina. I myself, I go into Canadian Tires and Support Checks and, and ask the question without any identification as to who I represent and, and get various answers from, from everyone that I talk to. So um, ultimately what we are, we're a national charity that is trying to provide access for uh, children and youth to some sort of physical activity. Um, there's various barriers to, to entry to sport. Um, first and foremost, for many families, it's financial barrier. Um, there's a lot of costs associated with playing organized uh, activities. Uh, and so that's really what, what Jumpstart was built on uh, back in 2005. That's where it kind of was uh, created. Um, and it's, it's grown from there. So um, it's, it's expanded out to, to help uh, not only with the registration fees, um, but as well as uh, equipment costs. Um, so you, you've got the avenue that Jeff's uh, organization provides, um, but we also have the, the retail side of, of our banner companies. So the Canadian Tire Sport Checks, um, Pro Hockey Life, uh, and, uh, and those types of uh, places. Um, so we can help facilitate the purchase of equipment as well by providing funding uh, through that avenue. Um, there's, there's other granting opportunities, like you mentioned, for community organizations. Um, and so if there's uh, a community organization that is qualified and, and is looking to put on programming to, to help youth as well, um, they can apply for grants under, under Jumpstart's um, Jumpstart Sport Relief Fund, which is open currently right now and, and plans to stay open for the rest of 2021 here. So ultimately, uh, across the board, it's, it's just trying to find a way to reduce that barrier for a family. Um, and, a, and a child to, to stay active and, and uh, grow all these skills that Jeff and Kevin, we all talked about uh, that we experienced as a youth. Uh, you yourself as a testament to that as well is that it can take you to various places um, uh, when you grow into your adult life. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, and we'll, you know, we'll dig in afterwards um, just a little more on sort of some of those, those opportunities. But uh, Jeff, if you wanna take it away and talk a little bit about uh, what you have access to and what others possibly could. Katrina, um, yeah, the sports bank's been around since 2014, founded by um, Bill Comrie, who uh, also started the Brick uh, many years ago. And um, through partnerships with Kids Sport and Hockey Canada and the, and the Flames Foundation, uh, the Calgary Foundation as well, um, the uh, a group of people uh, headed by Bill and, and uh, Al Coates um, started it back in 2014, and just looking for an opportunity to. Um, get families the opportunity to access sports equipment. Um, Brad and Kevin's organizations um, support the, the funding side of things. And uh, we're kind of the French fries with that. You know, we'll get uh, any families that are qualified with Jumpstart and with Kids Sport can access us and, and get any um, sports equipment that they need for um, the sport they're being funded for. But also we recognize that any physical activity and any other sport, um, the families can access us as well. So, um, in a nutshell, we take donated sports equipment, uh, gently used uh, or brand new, uh, and we receive it here in our warehouse in Calgary. And uh, we provide it to families that are qualified as uh, low income through, again, through uh, companies or organizations such as Kids Sport and, and Jumpstart. And uh, among other ones, uh, CP assistance programs of any kind. And um, the families are able to come in and, and get the, the sports gear they need. So um, we're not just a Calgary area um, organization. We are the Southern Alberta. Uh, so we can support families uh, Red Deer South. Um, there's another um, a partner organization or the same organization up in Edmonton uh, called Sports Central. Um, and they do the exact same thing sort of at Red Deer North. Um, so we're... Um, we collaborate with them when we can, but uh, for the most part, we can access our families can access us. Anybody living uh, sort of from Banff to Medicine Hat to Lethbridge to Red Deer and everywhere in between. Um, back in 2019, um, fall of 2019, we, we merged with Kidsport Calgary and area. Uh, so we are under the Kidsport Calgary uh, and area umbrella. Uh, and that just gives us a, a more of a, a one-stop shop feel for, uh, for the families and understanding that, Anybody that gets uh, fee assistance, registration assistance can get sports gear as well. So um, yeah, we're, we're pretty simple. If you need sports gear and you, you qualify as low income, uh, you make an appointment with us and you can come and get uh, any any sports gear that you uh, that you need. We, we have offer uh, over 20, 20 different sports. Uh, so all the major ones, hockey, soccer, baseball, lacrosse, football, um, down to the racket sports, uh, obviously tennis and badminton, 
um, downhill skiing, cross country skiing, snowboarding is a big one lately. Uh, this past year was probably our biggest year with, uh, with ski and snowboard as, as uh, the hills were able to, to stay open uh, along with, um, you know, families just looking to, to, you know, grab some skates and, and, uh, and go skating as well. So um, the beauty of our, our organization as well is that the families don't need to be registered in a sport. Um, if they're, if they're just qualified as low income, um, they can come and access uh, sports gear. If they just want a basketball to shoot hoops in the park next door or, or kick the ball around the field next door, then uh, the families can access us for that as well. So it's not necessarily a, a registered um, uh, child. It's just a, a family that's qualified as low income that wants uh, some physical activity in their life. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. And um, you know, as I turn it over to Kevin, I, I think, you know, what we're talking about here is partnerships, right? You guys and, and kids sport working together. And that's how we're going to get more and more youth and more and more families involved in sport is, is this partnership. So uh, thanks for that, Jeff. And uh, Kevin, take it away. Yeah, I can, I can mirror maybe Brad's introduction as um, kids sport is a, is a national charity as well. i been around for 28 years now um, with the Calgary chapter starting 26 years ago. Um, so we're in place to do very similar things. We help low-income kids uh, 18 and under with access to registration fee assistance. And um, now since the Sport Bank opened here in 2014, uh, the equipment side of the equations uh, handled through them. Um, our focus is, is purely on the registration fee side, which differentiates us from uh, Brad and, and what Jumpstart's doing, where they also have the programming and, and equipment. Um, so that would be the real difference maker. We're 100% community funded. So we're raising money in our community that stays in our community to help local kids um, and working with uh, the sport community to make that access uh, as easy as possible. Awesome. Okay, so let's go to probably what a lot of people wonder is uh, how, I mean, you're talking low income families, but um, you know, how do you how do people actually look and see if they qualify? And, you know, on that, and Kevin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you know, this, this is a weird time. So if, if you're talking, um, you know, tax assessment and, and notices of assessment, what happens if, you know, there's been such a change in people's work situations? Uh, so how, can you go through a little bit of the process about how people even see if they can, uh, can, can, can apply or an eligible. Yep. Um, yeah. So our, our application process and, and they're, they're very similar um, with what Jumpstart does to qualify families, but a family needs to be able to prove their household income. Uh, the application itself is a one page application where they um, include their parent information, the child information, what sport they're participating in, and then they need to be able to prove their household income. Um, so there's various documents that can be used to do that. Um, we use the uh, child uh, benefit letter, uh, notice of assessment. Um, and as you referenced, some of those documents become um, time stamped. Um, when we file our taxes, you know, by April 30th every year, which we all have to do, that's referencing our 2020 income. If your situation as a family change, which happened a lot even pre-pandemic with the economy um, here in Calgary, we, we need to be um, a little more uh, patient and flexible as, as we work through the process with families. So we, we look to get as much information from a family um, as possible to speak to their current situation, knowing that um, when these you know, circumstances do come up, if it's job loss or income changes, um, sick uh, family members that they're now at home caring for, that we try and gather as much information with them as we can um, to determine the current household income um, and then um, apply our, our funding criteria based on that. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth. Um, I think, you know, as we get kids back to sport coming out of this, I think the level of empathy and understanding needs to be elevated, not only internally for our team, but for all the registrars and volunteer um, sport operators, and even, you know, the for-profit um, sports sector, we got to help these families get through the process and we need to listen to them and um, we need to be patient with them. Um, some of them have information readily available. Some of them need to understand what they can collect and where they go to get it. 
Um, so I think all of us need to kind of wrap our arms around the families and, and do what we can to try and make sure the kids ultimately get some opportunities um, that otherwise they won't get. Awesome, thanks. And uh, so Brad, I'll, I'll turn it over to you since Kevin sort of, um, you know, talked about similar ways. And you, you know, what I really love is that um, even your term, Kevin, about wrapping our arms around, this is about getting kids and families active. So again, it's, it doesn't matter, you know, if we're talking Calgary, it doesn't matter where you live in the city, right? It, it, it's not differentiating. And that's, uh, it, you know, we, we've seen that, that COVID does not discriminate and, um, you know, job loss is happening everywhere in every area of the city. So Brad, maybe you can touch a little bit on, um, you know, sort of the, the format you guys go through and, and maybe a couple of the different funding, uh, you talked about sport relief fund, but I know that there are a few others as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so it, we're almost identical to, to kids sport in terms of the process um, <clears throat> and what we reference. Uh, our application system is all done through our website. Um, fairly straightforward uh, in terms of, of how it is completed. Um, and I'll add that um, we have two kind of opportunities or, or ways that we're trying to help families that may uh, that may be one of the challenges for them is accessing the computer themselves or, or a language barrier, for example. Um, so you can uh, invite a collaborator in into our uh, process. So once the parent uh, sets up their account, um, they fill out the, the financial information. So they reference the LICO chart, the low income cutoff uh, for Canada Revenue, um, upload their documentation, same as what Kevin referenced. Um, the next step they could do is immediately invite someone via email that could help them fill out the remainder of the application. So it's almost like uh, you guys are working together um, from the same computer, or it could be di completely different computers as well um, to kind of uh, finalize that. Um, the other spot, again, that uh, back to Kevin's note of, of just trying to be more receptive and understanding of the various situations that families are in, um, is, a, is there's an opportunity to provide uh, an explanation of the circumstance that your family is facing. So there's many families that were making, you know, 100,000 plus uh, two years ago, and now they're both uh, unemployed and family, our parents are both unemployed or, or whatever, right? So they're severely impacted by the, the pandemic here. So um, the documentation that they have access to might show a different uh, scenario than what the reality is. So uh, we allow families to fill out an extenuating circumstances text box on the application, basically outlining what their situation might be. Um, we, might add, we might follow up with some requests for proof of whatever the, the explanation may be, and that can be, um, you know, current pay stubs. Let's say they had to pick up a job that, uh, um, you know, they don't have the tax information for yet, um, or, or they're on employment income, or they're um, they have some other benefits that are helping them out. So they can fill that out. And again, back to Kevin's uh, point, we're not trying to find a way to say no to them. We want to try and find a way to say yes. So we're really trying to, to work with the family and, and make sure they get the help they need. Um, so yeah, so that's the individual um, uh, application process. Um, we also, like you mentioned, have other granting opportunities for organizations. Um, and and Pretty much across the board, as a response to the pandemic, we, we opened up the Jumpstart Support Relief Fund, um, which is, I think, the second intake closes in a th couple days here um, on the second. Uh, so we'll have one more intake uh, period for the remainder of 2021. Um, but this is for qualified organizations that uh, are in need of some sort of support themselves. Um, and there's two funding streams within the Jumpstart Support Relief there's the operational grant stream and then the program grant stream. So the uh, operational one is, is basically that. So if that is the first challenge for a lot of organizations and, and you've, I don't know if you've shared, you know, um, statistics in the past on these calls, but there's many organizations that are facing um, some, some bankruptcy issues or potentially closing their doors uh, as this pandemic goes along. So that was a response to that. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to help families put on program for, for youth and children, um, but their first challenge might be paying rent or, or you know, turn the lights back on, rehiring employees that have been temporarily laid off um, and whatever that challenge may be. So uh, organizations can apply under there for, for that type of funding. Uh, we also allow organizations, if they're trying to build up their virtual capabilities to deliver um, activities online to, to their various members, um, due to the restrictions that we're floating in and out of as we go along in the pandemic here, um, that could be applied as well to kind of build up that uh, ability. 
know, the programming side is is very much that. So it's an it's a specific program that's got a start and end date. It's got a certain amount of uh, youth that want to participate in it. Um, you've got some tangible details on what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to teach the children, what the program is, what the activity is. Um, and, and again, you can apply for, for funding that helps cover the registration costs. So under that would be staffing um, wages, um, rental fees for the facility you might have to, to work out of, um, and equipment costs can be looped in there as well. So again, back to our connection to our other banner companies, um, we can help facilitate large purchases of equipment if um, you know, many organizations have to build up, you know, the amount of soccer balls they have because kids can only touch their own soccer ball or, or whatever the restriction may be. So um, if that's another barrier for you guys as an organization to put on um, that activity, there's that avenue as well. Um, the lumped in again, it would be separate under a normal non-pandemic year, but we have parasport um, funding as well. So if the activity is a parasport of some nature, um, they can apply for funding as well. Um, and that is looped in right now under the Jumpstart Sport Relief Fund, but uh, in a non-pandemic year, it would be separated out um, and managed uh, accordingly from that regard. Same concept in terms of the programming side as well, um, in terms of an intentional program is being facilitated, start and end dates. Uh, the difference with that one, or one of the differences, would be that the age category can go up to, to adults, so you can be 25 um, and participate in those types of programs, whereas our, our other um, funding is geared towards four and 18 year old, between four and 18 year old uh, youth. Um, but yeah, so, so that's kind of, uh, we're trying to find ways to, to provide opportunities for kids through that. Um, uh, we can talk a bit about the other stuff that we have in terms of our um, inclusive playgrounds and other initiatives across the country, but I'll, I'll kind of leave it there and we'll, we'll keep going. Awesome. And uh, I'm just seeing in the chat, um, that was a question for Kevin that was answered and all the links uh, are in the chat. They're also going to be on our website. So um, the links to the organizations and um, again, Sport Relief Fund, $12 million released uh, for 2021. So, so that is awesome. We've talked a lot, um, various levels of government. We continue to talk about how many of these organizations will not survive 2021. And so we need to continue to support them. Um, Jeff, you know, when we're talking equipment, um, do, do people also have to, when they come, so can they just phone and say, you know, I have two kids, uh, I'm looking for this. Do they need, uh, again, the, the proof sort of that, that you need with Jumpstart and Kids Sport on the low income? How does that exactly work? Do they just show up? I know things are different now, again, with COVID. So if you could go through the process a little bit. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Both Brad and Kevin's organizations, they're a little more thorough and, and they, they do the legwork as far as qualifying families. Um, for us, our application process is, is pretty simple. If, if you've got supporting documents, um, whether it be a kid support letter or a jumpstart letter or a, a Calgary fee assistance a program letter or a, um, a parentry card, um, that's all the qualifying documentation we need. Um, so we don't do any of the qualifying. We don't look into, you know, uh, notice of assessments or, or like or anything like that. It's all um, based on being pre-approved by another organization. Um, so the individual families, it's as simple as contacting us, whether it be uh, via email or a phone call and providing the documentation um, uh, that supports them, you know, qualified as, as low income. Um, so those are individual families. Then we also have an agency referral form uh, format where agencies can can refer a family uh, on their behalf. So maybe again speaking to uh, sort of the last year we've we've had our families gone into some hardships and, and, and just needs a hand up, whether it be a um, you know can accept school principals uh, acting as an agency and, and supporting a family in, in need. Um, we've got youth centers, we've got social workers, um, different families like that that can refer a family, um, and, uh, and then the family can then you know, uh, a, a apply based on the agency referral. And again, the, uh, it's just a, a phone call or an email to us and they book an appointment. It's all by appointment only. So we don't get families, you know, log jammed after, you know, three 30 for, uh, after school kind of time. So we, um, yeah, it's all just based on, um, contacting us and, and making appointments all appointment based. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're actually going to, um, Becca from Sport Calgary team, we're going to show uh, a little video. Uh, I believe this is our jumpstart. Uh, no, kid sport video, I believe. All right, take a look. Meet Foon K and her eight year old son, Dami. Dami enjoys playing soccer at school, but his primary sport is Taekwondo. 
a Korean martial art that Dami has been practicing for the past five years. Funke and Dami are new Canadians, originally from Nigeria. Having recently moved, Funke was worried that Dami wouldn't be able to continue doing Taekwondo due to the expense of financial barriers. We wanted to continue with his therapy and we asked them if there was going to be help because we knew it was expensive. And they pointed us to resources and they said we should go to kick sports. When it comes to practicing Taekwondo, it isn't just play. The sport is also therapy in assisting with developing Dame's physical and cognitive skills. I don't want to cry, but it, it was one of the reasons why we're worried coming here as migrants, because we needed our son to be able to continue his sporting activity. It's, it's therapy for him, not just sports. Kid Sport has given us the opportunity to move on. Now he can use his hands. His motor skills have improved. Play is therapy. Play in children normalizes life. It gives them a normalcy, makes them kids again. With the support of Kidsport, the move to Canada has been an easier transition for Funke and Dame. I sleep well at night knowing that there's an organization that is caring about him. I know that other people can benefit too. Parents that need this, not just as a sport, but as a therapy. There's someone you could go to. I know I could always count on kids' sports. How long have you been practicing Taekwondo for? I don't know. Five years. Wait, wait five years, maybe. <laughs> I forgot. Awesome. Thanks, Becca. Uh, well, there you go. There's a, you know, a, a real life story. And again, it's, you know, we know coming out of the pandemic how key sport uh, participation will be for that physical side. But again, it's that social, emotional and mental health side. Um, Kevin, can you give us an idea of like the number of organizations that, that you're supporting? And I don't even know if it's fair to ask if it's different right now because sport has halted. And I, I guess, where do you see it going? And um, because, you know, once sport opens up, I mean, I think people will we're all kind of desperate to get back. So, uh, you know, are we talking, how many sport organizations? I have no clue. Yeah, in uh, 2019, um, 490 different sport organizations received funding through our chapter. Um, so those are all sports, soccer being our biggest, but um, martial arts, basketball, dance, uh, water polo, equestrian, um, really you name it. Um, as long as there's an instructional component, and there's a, a minimum time requirement um, involved to make sure the kids are benefiting from a, a coach, um, then, then it's considered um, a sport we look at funding. Um, and, and I think, you know, it probably has changed a little bit. We know of some clubs that are no longer operating. We know of some clubs that have merged together to try and find some efficiencies and make sure they are ready to um, operate when their sports do return. Um, but overall, I think, uh, as you mentioned, sports going to play a huge role in, in getting kids built back up, our community built back up, um, and we want to make sure that we're, we're there to help them. And, and through the organizations on this call, I think we can um, really make sure the families that need us um, have the support needed to get back to the sports they choose. And, and I think it's going to be a lot different. Um, we, we thought last June when sport was opening back up that we we're going to see a big tidal wave of of applications um, and as we started connecting with sport clubs and and families realizing that there's less spots available because of restrictions um, some clubs weren't ready to operate um, and for families um, even though our financial assistance was there and with support of kids sport and jumpstart for some of them it wasn't enough to consider because of the situation they were in um, and there's still the anxiety and health concerns um, that are facing them, you know, putting their kids back into situations they just weren't clear of and how the health impact um, may be. So I think it's, you know, incumbent upon all of us um, to make sure sport is going to be safe when, when it uh, does come back fully and that um, organizations like ours, Sport Calgary, um, and all the great sport providers in our city are ready to embrace these families and, and get them the access and opportunities they deserve. For sure. And uh, just so everybody knows, we do have a find your sport on, on our website. And, you know, we're always trying to promote sports. Uh, the other 
a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about disc golf. So again, a sport that can be done all year in a safe environment that, that's very, um, you know, financially friendly. So again, we're always trying to find uh, opportunities. And that's why we want to have this discussion about different opportunities and different organizations that are there for support. Um, Jeff, when sports starts back up, are, are you guys ready? And, and, and within that, I guess my second part of the question is, how do people donate to you? Because most people right now, especially being at home, I, I know for me, I'm going through bins and finding stuff. So, you know, in those situations, um, yeah, are you ready? Or do, you th do you see you running out of equipment? And if people do have extra equipment, how do they get it to you? Uh, firstly, yeah, no, we, there's no shortage of equipment. Certainly the generosity of the community and, and uh, organizations and whatnot. Uh, we've got a warehouse here over in Aaron Woods uh, full of uh, sports equipment. And, and to Kevin's point there, we've, we've kind of limped back into um, you know, even families being comfortable um, with physical activity and, and, and participating in sports. So um, we've got lots of gear here ready to go. Um, we've been pretty steady, um, probably working at about a 60% um, um, outgoing uh, of, of equipment in the last year. Um, so it's uh, um, a little slower, but yeah, tons of equipment, um, no issues there. Um, this year actually um, due to other programs being cut, we've had great sponsorships and, and, and partnership deals with um, Bauer Hockey, uh, donated a bunch of uh, um, hockey gear to us, uh, gloves, sticks, skates, and, and helmets. Uh, and along with uh, Scotia Bank and, uh, and the Calgary Flames as well, they donated some sports gear or some hockey gear as well. So um, hockey helmets is the biggest one. It's a, a piece of equipment that we do purchase here uh, at the Sports Bank just to ensure safety and um, kids that are coming in are getting a, a you know, brand new helmet. Um, so that uh, partnership with the Flames and uh, Scotia Bank was huge. They, they donated uh, 500 helmets. Um, so a massive expense for us uh, in, in savings. And then um, as far as donating, um, we've got our warehouse here and like I said, in, in Aaron Woods, but uh, we partner with um, the Wood Automotive Group. So Jerry Wood and his, uh, and his dealerships are located throughout the city and, and they, are, uh, they act as our drop-off uh, locations. So you can go on our website and then check out our, our drop-off locations, but Woodridge Ford, Big Four Auto, um, Village Honda are the, are the big ones. And uh, families can simply drop off the gear there and they've got a, uh, in their showroom, a big truck, pickup truck. And I uh, just check in with customer service at the dealerships. And um, if it's loose, loose sports gear, they'll give you a clear plastic bag that you can um, put the gear in and we throw it in the back of the truck there. And then um, through their delivery, uh, delivery guys, they'll, they'll uh, come and drop it off up here. So again, utilizing a, a great partner in, in the Wood Automotive Group, but, uh, but also keeping it, uh, um, a little easier for families to uh, to drop off throughout the city. Awesome, that's great. Uh, yeah, good to know. And uh, hopefully, you know, once we everybody's doing some spring cleaning, so uh, hopefully you'll get some so, some new stuff uh, coming to you as well. Yeah, and, that's and, always the this time of year is is big. Certainly, uh, being spring and, and hockey season coming to end. Hockey is our, our biggest uh, sport that we uh, that we just mm -hmm. but. Um, we always try to encourage people to, to make sure it's uh, usable and not just, uh, you know, the, the 1970s skates that have been sitting there for a while. And, and you want to, you know, people sometimes have a fear of throwing your own equipment out and they'd rather, you know, see it go to a good cause. But uh, we always say if you're not putting your kid in it, um, we're, uh, we're likely not going to put uh, one of our kids in it either. So it's, it's uh, um, always a fine line there, but uh, we don't turn away many, uh, many donations, that's for sure. We'll find a home for it one way or another. Perfect. That's what we want to hear. Um, Brad, you know, we talk about the sport relief fund and there was one in the, in the fall of 2020. And I think it was, goodness, I think it was about 700 organizations across the country that, that received funding. Um, let's look forward, which is very hard to do right now. <laughs> um, you know, this sport relief fund of $12 million, and you said that's going to be um, as much as this one segment is closing, it's, it's going to be for 2021. What about uh, a post pandemic? I mean, where do you see sort of the, the funding? I mean, Jumpstart has been around for a while, it's going to continue to be around, but uh, will this, will some of these programs for not just individuals, but for organizations uh, continue? Do you, do you foresee that? Because I think for local Calgary, again, it was mentioned, I think earlier by Kevin, you know, the economy, we're in a tough situation. And uh, even post pandemic, we're not just going to pop out of this quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. Yeah, it's, 
it's hard to forecast out um, what the situation will be like. We were we were very fortunate to get the the twelve million dollar donation from the Canadian Tire Corporation side of of our uh, company, um, and and that's hopefully going to continue into to 2022. Um, especially, I, I can't see us going away from um, this opportunity if the pandemic drags on till then. And I'm knocking on wood here, just to want to think positive. Um, but yeah, it, it, like the. Even prior to the pandemic, we had community development grants, which is very much um, the program stream side of our Jumpstart Sport Relief Fund. So um, in a sense, maybe that operational funding might uh, might kind of pivot and, and go more towards supporting actual intentional programming versus um, the organizations. But um, we, we've, uh, all three of these organizations on the, on the call here, we've, we've prided ourselves very much on being nimble and responsive to the situations at hand. Um, and so, so I don't want to put a, a concrete decision on that um, because we don't know what's coming. So uh, we intend to be there as, as much as we possibly can be to help organizations. Um, you mentioned the challenges from the, the federal government and, and trickles all the way down through provincial and, and municipal governments that the funding isn't necessarily um, geared towards sports organizations. Um, so we're, we're happy to jump in where we can. Um, and, and I think I'd be, I, I want to mention too, it goes to kind of Kevin's point and even, and even Jeff's in terms of having equipment is um, some great things have come out of this pandemic in terms of what has, has been able to been offered. Um, and Jumpstart took a chance on, on providing a play from home hub um, which you can access through our website, which provided um, basically our, our community partners from across the country put together these amazing you know, activity videos. Um, and it ranges from the instructors. You, you've got head coaches from professional amateur teams. You've got athletes themselves, Paralympians, Olympians, um, you know, junior amateur athletes as well, just showing kids how to stay active within whatever space they live in. Um, and so I, I, I think of it as you combine all the kind of groups together here. You go get something you need from Jeff and, and you take it to your backyard and you watch some videos and you play from, from home and, and stay active. It doesn't always have to be um, in a group scenario. I know that's what we're all craving right now, but there are ways to, to live within the restriction and stay safe to whatever your, your, your abilities are. So that is something that we um, developed as a response to the fact that organizations had to close their doors. Um, but it's turned into something that was incredibly positive and, and a great way, um, frankly, to, to reach the remote communities in a, in a meaningful way. Um, there's a lot of children and a lot of families out there that they're, you know, hours away from their local rec facility. So um, just having the ability to engage with um, certified instructors in that manner is, is super beneficial. Beneficial. So, um, yeah, we offer, we just came out of a March break camp. So kids could have done a, a virtual mark break, mark break, mark break camp. Um, and then, uh, summer camps as well. So we did nine weeks last year, uh, for summer camp. So there was various themes, uh, throughout the summer and you can sign up. It's free. It's hundred percent free. Um, and there's basically stuff to do throughout the day. Uh, interactive with with your camp counselors um, and uh, and yeah you can do a lot of things on your own time as well. Awesome and uh, yes that program uh, is in Ontario but as Brad has talked about um, Sport Relief Fund and all their programs are across the nation and it's a partnership um, and so many organizations really uh, received that Sport Relief Fund in the fall and can also uh, apply again right here in Calgary and in Alberta. Um, just before we, we also have um, Flames Equipment Bank uh, video, Jeff, I just want to ask um, if there's a sport that, um, you know, a school wants to try, um, I guess a little bit of a Quick two-part question. Um, a school can come to you, I'm, I'm assuming, and also if you don't necessarily all have that equipment, uh, where do, how do you go about, like you said, 20 sports, but what if it's a bit of a different sport? How, how do you uh, chase that down? Yeah, we um, we can support schools for sure. Uh, I mean, a little bit outside of our model, there's you know we've we've loaned some gear to uh, to some programs, uh, whether it be a school or even a you know a summer program or a summer camp, that sort of thing. Um, uh, so yeah, we're, we're certainly happy to assist. Um, and then as far as getting gear, we can, we can use our platform and social media and, and try and, uh, you know, put an ask out there or, or through, um, you know, kids sport and other sport clubs. Uh, there might be excess equipment within, uh, within some of the clubs that, that have something, you know, out of, uh, out of the norm. Maybe you mentioned, uh, 
um, you know, Frisbee golf. It's, uh, you know, we don't have the, we've got Frisbees, but not the, uh, the actual Frisbee golf ones. We've got lacrosse sticks, that sort of thing. So we've had, you know, some groups come in and ask for lacrosse sticks or, um, you know, curling brooms, that sort of thing. So a little more, um, not mainstream, but, uh, um, as far as, you know, gear being donated here, but, uh, we can certainly use our platform and, and ask or use the sport clubs and, and other partners. Um, and then this year we've, we've certainly done a better job, uh, um, with some granting opportunities. So um, again, to the point earlier that there's, there's some silver lining there that, that uh, more grants out there this year, it seems to uh, for, for organizations such as ourselves, all three of ours to, to access some, some funding out there and, and, uh, and get some more gear. Like we've just through the parks uh, foundation, actually we've got some skateboards and some scooters coming and, you know, again, just keeping the kids active this summer, hopefully. And um, um, wait till a uh, sport is back and, and they can participate, but let's keep them active so we can, uh, exactly. we can access it that way. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. And uh, Becca, yeah, if we can uh, cue that uh, final video, please. For Jassythe, the designated funds for each season is an integral part for year round participation in sport for her children, eight year old Inti and 11 year old Nuna. For me, kids sport is very important because my kids want to play sport all year round in different season. We like the fact that with kids sport, there's a certain amount of money that is designated for your kid and it's for throughout the year. So we use it in January for cross country skiing and then we use it again in the fall for baseball. Kids sports partnerships with the Calgary Flames Sports Bank in southern Alberta and Sports Central in northern Alberta has also made a significant impact on families like Jasith's making it easier for her kids to access the equipment needed to take part in their chosen sports. The biggest impact is um, the connection and the referral to Flames um, Equipment Bank because uh, with the kids sport referral, then they can have equipment not just for the sport that kids sport is paying, but for other uh, sport as well. I think the equipment part of the sport, it's not only the most expensive, but it's very difficult to get donation for some particular sports that are very specific. That connection for me, it's extremely important. Why do you think it's important for you to be playing sports? What do you like about it? Because it makes me happy, make new friends. Normally I do fall baseball, so that's also my birthday. So I kind of do my birthday at the same time as baseball. And I like it because you have lots of choices to do. So it's not only one thing or the other. You have like so many choices and I make a lot of new friends. Being a single mother, the kids sport community has become an integral member of Josiah's family. I need the community and other people to help provide for the kids. For me, it's, you know, part of the family, really. <laughs> Great video. Um, so just, I want to be sensitive of everybody's uh, lunchtime. Uh, it's now 1249. So I just want to uh, open it up uh, again in the chat. Um, if there are any questions and if, if, uh, if anybody would like to, um, to have a, a breakout room at the end of this, um, you know, just just drop us a note, and then uh, Becca from Sport Calgary team can can uh, can organize that. Um, let's see. Oh, there was one earlier up here that I missed. Um, let me go to it. Brad and Kevin, our families able to apply using the agency referral program that Jeff mentioned. Uh, I asked this because some parents are hesitant to fill out forms requiring their financial situation. They, they feel better with uh, agencies or organizations who are working in their community. So uh, not sure who wants to answer that one. Um, yeah, I, I, I can take a crack at it. Like we said, with families situations changing, we try and work through um, whatever model is best going to support the family. We do need to understand their household income um, at some point in the process. Um, and we have had, you know, we have worked with social workers and agencies um, in the case of, you know, many families, um, refugees, newcomers that sometimes don't even have paperwork at first. Um, so there is ways to do it. And we just, I guess we uh, ask for the conversation and, and agencies to definitely reach out and and make sure that isn't a barrier. Okay, great. Um, oh, Brad, do you wanna jump in or are you good? Yeah, no, I was just gonna say the same thing. Um, uh, you really, it, it, you can, they can use that extenuating circumstances option on our application and, and outline 
um, you know, their, whatever the situation may be and, and provide, um, we, we kind of look at it as an endorsement. So um, someone that is a, a professional in good standing that can vouch for the situation the family's uh, experiencing, um, provided we can confirm all that information, then absolutely they can, uh, they can apply that way. Awesome. And um, Jeff, I'm going to link this uh, that just came in also about is sometimes getting the equipment uh, a barrier. Um, you know, if, if people don't have that transportation, are there any programs um, that go into communities to distribute or are you, I mean, are people able to volunteer for that? I guess that's, that's another part of the question. Uh, it's a great question. Actually, I didn't, uh, I didn't touch on that earlier, but we have, uh, we have a partnership through Rosno Transport um, along with our um, remote outfitting form. So communities outside of Calgary area can access us uh, by filling out the form with uh, details on the, on the child and the, the, the sport uh, equipment they need um, and different sizing and whatnot. So we have that, uh, that form that uh, families can access. And then through our partners with at Rosenau Transport, we actually ship at no cost to the families that would be uh, the closest Rosenau uh, distribution center or, uh, or to their door. Um, so yeah, we definitely have access to, uh, to get gear out, uh, outside of Calgary and area. No, no, no question. And that, uh, again, that form is on our, our website. Awesome. Hey, okay. Katrina, if I can just jump in, I yes, just, please. while it was top of mind, but the video there, the family we just saw, I think is a, a perfect depiction of what these organizations are all about. Um, because Jacinth, uh, has received support from Kidsport, Jumpstart, as well as the Flame Sports Bank. So her family, um, those kids are very active and involved in sport, many different sports throughout the year. Brad's worked with them, we've worked with them, so has Jeff, um, and that's you know where we can all jump in together to really help a family. So awesome. I just wanted to add that. Perfect, thanks. Yeah. And uh, boy, those kids spoke well too. So look at the confidence it's given them, it's great. Um, okay, well, I know Becca uh, put in the chat, um, if anybody wants a breakout, one-on-one -on -one breakout room, uh, we don't see any requests. Um, yeah, we're, we're good on that. So, uh, you know, just sensitive of everybody's time, we have all the links um, to the organizations. Uh, on our website and again you can contact each one of Jeff, Kevin or Brad and uh, ask them more specific questions if you want. Um, yeah I want to thank our panel. Thank you Brad, thank you Kevin, thank you Jeff. Um, you know it's it's a tough situation for everybody out there but uh, I'm going to scroll up and look at Brad's uh, quote. Um, yeah, he said, we're not trying to find a way to say no, we're trying to find a way to say yes. So uh, these three organizations are, are here for the community. So once again, thank you to the panel. Uh, we appreciate the work you're doing. And um, you know, if there, there are people out there who, who can help um, even donate to these organizations, help spread the word, you guys, of, of what's out there. And uh, let's get everybody back to sport. So thank you uh, to our panel. Thank you to everybody who's registered. Um, Brad, you mentioned something about 2022. We'll be back to normal. I hope in the fall we're back to the back to normal because our plan is to have our all sport events where people can try things for free, and uh, then we can get everybody back to sport. So uh, thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Stay safe, and uh, we'll check in in uh, two weeks' time with our next. Faces of Calgary Sport. So thanks.